Hi smart people, my name is Carol and this is Ads Courses, a channel where I share with you the best digital marketing secrets and web analytics tricks. Today we will continue our BigQuery for Marketers series. You will learn the basics of SQL language to get data that you want and analyze it like a boss. If you find my videos helpful or interesting, consider to hit the subscribe button now. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so welcome to my second video about BigQuery. And today I'm going to talk about why you should learn SQL if you're a marketer. I'm going to teach you the basic query functions using BigQuery so that you can pull out the data that you're interested in. And I'm going to show you a way to import your data sources into BigQuery using Stitch. Okay, so first of all, why you should learn SQL if you're a marketer or digital marketer. So first of all, it's very easy to learn, especially if you're an advanced Google Sheets or Excel user. So if on your daily basis you're using, for example, query functions, then learning SQL won't be a problem for you at all because it's very, very similar. SQL is actually a very logical programming language. And even if you don't know any other programming language, you will have no problems learning it. Second of all, SQL has the infinite scale and it's best for big data. You know, Google Sheets or Excel, they're great for dealing with data, but actually they don't perform well if you want to actually analyze a large data sets. And if you want to analyze big data, then you should use BigQuery or SQL in general. And SQL and BigQuery, they are great for joining different data sources, large data sources. And of course, adding SQL into your skill sets will be very valuable. You will stand out for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to import your data into BigQuery from different data sources using Stitch. So first of all, you should visit the website stitchdata.com and it's simply a tool that lets you import different data sources into, for example, BigQuery. And there is a 14 days free trial. And if you go to the pricing, you can see that they also have a free plan and it allows you to have 5 million rows per month and it's free forever. So you can just, you know, start your trial, but after the trial, you can have this free plan if you want to. Okay, so just register in here. I won't show you how to register because it's like very straightforward. And after that, you can log into your dashboard. I have some data sources in here. It doesn't matter. And what we want to do is add an integration. You can do it simply by clicking in here. And there are a lot of data sources available in here. Let's search for Google Analytics. For example, there it is. And you want to add an integration name. So let's call it like GA tutorial three. And you can select to synchronize historical data and other settings. Let's authorize this. And allow, of course. Okay, so after you're authorized, you can select your Google Analytics account. I can show you them right now because of the privacy reasons. I will select this one. Of course, you can use other tools to import your data into BigQuery. For example, Supermetrics. You could use the Coding is for Losers a sheet connector, but it actually it's completely free, but it doesn't work for now because Google is not allowing it to authorize. So they have some problems. I wasn't able to actually use it recently. Okay, so after you select, you need to scroll all the way down and hit continue. Okay, so now you can select your metrics and dimensions from Google Analytics account. So you can add maximum of 10 metrics and maximum of seven dimensions. So for example, let's add sessions, of course. Okay. Okay, so let's add transact. Maybe let's add users. I don't have transactions in this account. And you could add eight more if you would want to. I just want to show you how to integrate. So I won't pick more than two. And let's choose dimensions. So I will go with a source. Okay, so it's under traffic sources, GA source. Great. And now hit save integration. And you can click all done now. Okay, so now we have this project name. It's pending. Okay. And now you could select the destination in here. So it will be a place you, where you want to extract your data from Google Analytics. And I already connected my Google BigQuery profile in here. 
So I won't be able to show you how to do it, but it's very straightforward. You would just select the Google BigQuery as a destination, and then you would choose, you need to, of course, log in using your Google account, and you will choose your project name and Google Cloud Storage location. And actually that's like it. And after this, you would need to actually wait a couple of hours and your data should be available in Google BigQuery under your project. I think it's here, it's called Fleet Parser. and I have here my tables from Stitch integration, okay? And of course you can select in Stitch, how often do you want to, your data to be updated? Okay, so that's how you can integrate your data sources to BigQuery uh, like in minutes. And now I'm gonna teach you the basic elements of SQL and query functions. Okay, because of the privacy reasons, I can't show you, I can't teach you these query functions using a Google Analytics data. I will teach you all of this using the BigQuery public data that is available for everyone in the Google Cloud platform. If you don't know how to import this data in your Google BigQuery, simply watch my previous video where I show you how to do it. And we're gonna do this in the New York Trees data set and we're gonna use the tree species table. So simply select this and you can select a query table. Okay, and it simply will fill in the, the basics to actually query this particular table. Okay, so let's just format this. So let's see the data, how it looks. You can hit the preview and you will see the columns and the column names. So we've got the species scientific name, we've got the species common name, We've got the fall color in here and other columns also. So let's say you want to query, extract uh, this column only. So a species common name. And to do this, you would simply write down select because it means what you want to select. And in this example, it would be species. Okay, if you start to write and hit tab, you will see these options. It's very helpful to actually write the code faster. So let's select species common name. And now we have from, and here you write where you want your data to be extracted from. So this will be the data set, the BigQuery public data, dot New York trees. This is the data set, dot tree species. This is the table. And let's get rid of this limit. Okay, and now you can see that won't take a lot of data to actually process this. Let's run this. And we have our species common names in the results in here. Okay, so this is the basics of how the query looks like. So you've got your select and what you want to select and from, so where from you want to select your data. Okay, so let's add more columns to select. To do this, you simply write it like this and let's select form, okay, and file color. Okay, and in the SQL, it doesn't matter. You could add like a lot of space in here. It won't matter, you know. You could even write it all in one line. Of course, it won't be, you know, good to the eye, but you could do it, okay. And after the last selected column, you just leave it like this. You can do it like that and it will show you an error. So the last one, just before from, you just simply leave it like this. Okay, so let's run this query. Okay, just to show you the basics. Here we have our results. We've got species common name, we've got form, and we've got file color. Good. Okay, so now we'll jump into the different data source just to show you that you can, you know, calculate. You're not allowed just to extract the columns and what's in the rows, but you can actually calculate the data from your data source. So let's go to the three, three census 2015 and let's query this table. Okay, let's format the data. And if you go to the preview, you would see that we have all these tree IDs, columns, block IDs. And what we want to do is a distinct count the number of tree IDs, right? So that we will see the number of actual trees from this data source. And to do this, let's just write select count distinct tree ID as number of trees. This is the part where you name your column because you will create a new column with this calculation. So you need to name your new column and we will name it number of trees num trees right so this is how you write this code we have our from and you could add this limit but you don't have to okay so let's run this query okay so here are the results and we can see that there is a this number of tree ids in this data source and of course you can create more calculations in your query so for example 
if you want to know the average tree dbh so let's go to the data source let's preview the data i don't know what it's actually what it means but if you would want to know the average of this metric you can simply write it like this average avg tree dbm so this is your metric this is your column name right because we again we're creating a new column so we need to name it as average tree diameter so this is a tree diameter okay and it will return the average of tree diameter created in this new column and another example of calculation would be max so it will show you the maximum tree diameter and we will name this column as max tree diameter from this data set so let's run this query and here are our results so we have our number of trees from this part count distinct we've got our average tree diameter so this is this part and we can see the results here and we see our max tree diameter in here and this is this part and there are a lot of more functions in sql that you can use of course you can google them and they are very easy to use and if you've been using query functions in sheets then you will have no problems using these functions in sql okay so these are just the simple examples of calculated fields in sql okay so another thing that i want to show you is a where class so i will just write it right now okay so let's see the data again okay so we've got this column named health and this is the health of the tree right so it could be good fair null poor etc and let's say that we want to extract only the data you know this calculated data where uh, the health doesn't equal good you know so we want to only see the fair the poor and any other than good health of a tree so what you want to do is write this where class and you need to put it after the from clause in here so the actual order of these parts needs to be like this so we've got select always first we've got from and then we've got where okay so where health so this is the name of a column and this is how you select something that you want to exclude from your query so it will exclude good the health column is a string so you need to write it like this you can write it like that because it's a string so you could do it like this okay it doesn't matter okay so let's run this query okay so this is our data and it's using only the trees where health doesn't equal good okay so now i'm going to show you how to group your data and how to order it so let's go back to our tree species table let's query it let's just format it so let's say i want to extract species common name form and fall color from this data set and it will look like this right so we've got our columns in here but what we want to do now is group the data so it will be grouped by the species common name and then by the form and then by the file color so to do this you simply write group by and this needs to be after the from section okay and now you simply write how you want to group it and i want to group it firstly by the species common name then by the form and then by the file color so let's just format this okay so this is how it looks okay so let's get rid of this limit and let's run this query okay so we've got our species common name we've got our form and color file color and if you would have like a different the same species common name with different forms or different file colors then it would be ordered grouped by the species common name so we would have this tulip tree tulip tree uh, but pyramid rounded it will be grouped you know this is actually not the best result because i don't see any examples of different of the same trees with different forms or file colors but this is what the group by simply does okay so now let's say we want to order our data and to do this you simply write order by after the group by if you don't have group by it's simply after the from or where class okay and here you write how you want to order your data so it would be species common name first then it would be form fall color so let's run this query okay so this is ordered alphabetically right now so first of all it's species common name alphabetically then it would be form and then file color so you can order your data like this and the last thing that i want to show you today is how to add a limit you simply write limit and you write how many rows do you want to extract so let's say 1000 you simply run it like this 
this is good if you don't want to waste too many data you can limit it like this if you want to see like only first 1000 results this is how you would want to do it and you will see 1000 results in here or less right okay so for today it would be it these are the basics of sql functions and you can try it out by yourself i would actually recommend that you do just play around with the data there are a lot of free data in here you can import your data from google analytics using stitch and play around with your real data and in the next video it's going to be very interesting i'm going to talk about how to join tables from different data sources and i'm going to show you the unnesting record arrays and more and this will be very useful when you work on your google analytics data and then I'm going to show you how to visualize your data using Google Data Studio. So you will actually extract this data that is in here into the Google Data Studio and we will create dashboards and tables and visualizations there. Okay, I hope that now you understand the basics of SQL language and BigQuery interface. In the next video, you will learn more useful and powerful functions that will make you a BigQuery star. If you have any questions or want to share your ideas, you can do this in the comment section below. If you don't want to miss any of my other videos, simply subscribe to this channel. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.